Hi, I'm going to show you how to get started with PHP development on your own personal computer. Uh, but first off, I have to show you where PHP fits into the mix of the whole web design and development um, process. Here's what normally happens. This is the image that I have on my screen shows you that when there is a client, and a client is typically the vocabulary term for a web browser. Whenever somebody clicks on a link, a request is sent back to some web server somewhere on the internet. And that web server then starts assembling all of the files for the web page, all the images and the JavaScripts and the HTML, and simply sends it back to the client. Uh, the browser then assembles all of those files and makes a nice pretty web page. Well, that's pretty basic. But with PHP, we can start to add some new things into the mix. The client will still make normal requests as usual, but the request, the links that we'll click on won't end in .html. The ahrefs will end in .php. So the server has to do something different when it sees a .php page. Instead of just grabbing a bunch of files and throwing them back at the client, the server is actually going to literally open up the PHP file and start reading through it. Whenever it finds PHP commands, it's going to run them. This is a process called parsing, and that's a vocabulary term for you if you need that. Um, the PHP code can do uh, many, many different things. Uh, it can handle logins, it can search databases, it can create uh, lists and do repetitive uh, work. It can even communicate with other web servers. So what ends up happening is the PHP code tells the computer to create something. For example, it might create a login section on your web page. Um, so that login section has some code that will run. It may even require talking to the database that you will have set up on your server. And then when it's done, it's going to output what looks like a, an HTML page. But it'll be custom to that person. We can have it look up that person's specific information, and the PHP will output that into the HTML. So once the computer, the server, is done parsing all of the PHP and is done talking to the database, it's going to have an, uh, an HTML file that it will then send to the client. Now, this is great, um, but how do we get our computers to do this? Because right now, they probably don't. What you're going to need is a piece of software called XAMPP. Uh, XAMPP, and there are a couple of other programs out there that, that work on this. This is a server that you can run on your own computer and it's made up of a couple of different pieces and I'll show you as we go through this. First of all the address is apachefriends.org I'll show you what that means here in just a second. This is the home page for the English version. It has uh, many different languages. If you click on here, their most important project, XAMPP, you're going to see that it comes for, in several different flavors. Linux, Windows, Mac, Solaris. I'm going to do Windows but I also want you to know what this contains. First off, it'll work on any computer back to Windows 2000. And it contains three pieces of software that we're most interested in. One is called Apache. That is the web server that normally does the basic stuff. All it does is send out um, pages. It doesn't understand PHP. In order to do that, we have to add the PHP plus pair module. And this is simply an add-on to Apache that allows it to understand and run PHP commands. The last thing that we won't get into quite yet, but we will soon, is uh, MySQL. That's the database server, and that literally is a separate program. Now, you can download each one of these individually and install and configure them, but they are a pain to do that. They are very, very finicky pieces of software. So this installer was developed where it will grab all of those things, plus some other stuff, including an FTP server, an EZZ um, interface for the database, and a couple of other things and it will let you, it will just install them. So this next page I'm going to download XAMPP and right here, this is the one that I recommend that you get the installer because it will do everything for you and it will configure itself to your computer. Now I have already downloaded this right here. I'm not going to go through the full install but I'll show you that you just simply need to run it and basically click next, 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 next. You don't change any of the configurations in this and it will run just fine. It, you may get a warning about having an antivirus running. I haven't had any problems, but you can turn it off if you like. Go ahead and install everything that it comes with. And here's the important part right now. It's going to be installed in a folder called XAMPP. 
uh, in the C drive. It's not going to be in your program files, and that's okay. Um, at this point, I already have it installed just for demonstration purposes, but you should be able to click Next and go through the, the next couple of steps and see what, what's going on. I'm going to abort the installation process and show you what the end product is going to look like. In the C drive, you're going to have a new folder called XAMP. And in this XAMP folder are a couple of these little orange icons. The one that you want, and it will probably be installed in your start menu, it'll be called XAMP Control. And it'll give you this little window. And as you can see, I've got the Apache module running. There's MySQL, FileZilla, all these other things. Um, the two that you'll worry about most are Apache and MySQL. You can start and stop them. And once you've started them, we can actually access the software now. We need to get this Apache module to, uh, here I'll demonstrate, it's pretty simple, just stop it and it's done, start it, it'll go from yellow to green after a few seconds. There we go, it's, it's that simple. So now what I need to do is get some PHP pages running. So I've got Dreamweaver, I'm going to create a, a brand new HTML page with not much in it. I'm not going to worry about any of this. And all I'm going to do is have a very simple PHP command echo hello world. Oops. There we go. And I'm going to save this on my desktop and I'll save it as index, I'll save it as test.php. As you can see, a PHP file is really just an HTML file with some PHP code in it. Really, .php just tells Apache that it needs to go through and parse this HTML file. So if you try and save this as an .html, it will not run in the, in the server. Now here's the problem. When you try and test this, for example, in Dreamweaver, you can hit F12 and it'll run it in a browser. Or if you double click on it, absolutely nothing's going to happen. It's going to try and open it in Dreamweaver. That's because we need to put this file in a very, very special place. And I'm going to go back into the XAMP folder because the one that you need to worry about is called htdocs. Now, when you install some, the first time you install XAMP, there's a bunch of stuff in htdocs you can get rid of all of it. It really doesn't matter. Then, you need to save all of your PHP files here. Cool. Now, if I double click on it, it still will try to open in Dreamweaver. We're not quite there yet. So now, uh, to actually access this, you need a web browser. And this is the only way that you're going to be able to do this. You need to go to a new web page, and it's a very special address. It's http colon slash slash localhost. There's no www or anything like that. What this will do is it tells the Apache server that's running on your computer to look inside that htdocs folder. And now you can see that it's got a sort of a web interface but it's looking inside that folder. When I click on this now through localhost it will run the PHP code that I had in there. So this is how you're going to have to do all of your PHP development. Once you've got XAMPP nice and installed, all you have to do is save everything inside this htdocs folder, and then the proper way to access it is to go to localhost. And everything that comes after the slash after localhost is just the file structure that's in here. So if I were to create a new folder and just call it new, and I go back to my page here and I refresh it with F5, you can see that there's the new folder. If I had a file in there, clicking on that would show all of the files in here, and it'll show images and PHP files and HTML files and everything that you need. So this is how you get started with PHP web development.